Thomas Ken Mattingly, the astronaut who helped save the Apollo 13 crew, has died at the age of 87. Thomas began his career as a Navy pilot and then joined the NASA astronaut sure. class of 1966. Mattingly was unable to fly on the mission due to sickness, but his insight and guidance on the ground was considered crucial to bringing fellow astronauts home safely. He later orbited to the moon on Apollo 16. And joining me live now is Glenn Nagel from the CSIRO's Deep Space Communication Complex. Glenn, thanks so much for your time. Many of our viewers will know who Ken Mattingly is, but for those who don't, run us through who he was and his legacy. Yeah, you cannot underestimate just the importance of the role that Ken Mattingly played in the, all the Apollo missions. In fact, he was a backup command module pilot for Apollo 11. He was the community a capsule communicator on Apollo 8, and of course was slated to be part of the Apollo 13 crew until his, well, the doctors had presumed that he'd been exposed to the German measles, uh, which he actually never ended up contracting and was then vital after the accident of the Apollo 13 astronauts after an oxygen tank exploded halfway to the moon, crippling their spacecraft. And Ken was really important. It's a real expert on the command module about how to actually get that spacecraft back home after such a huge disaster. Now, you just mentioned that his greatest legacy, of course, was his work on Apollo 13. Run us through how important he was to this mission. What had happened to the Apollo spacecraft is when the oxygen tank exploded, that's not only providing air for the astronauts, but also power for the spacecraft. When you power down the spacecraft, the command module, which is designed to bring the astronauts back home, they had to move into the lunar module act as a lifeboat for those astronauts on the Apollo 13 mission. And the, the lunar module was only designed for two people for about 48 hours. They had to handle three people for about five days to get them to the moon and back again, flying around the moon using its gravity to slingshot the astronauts back home. So actually powering up the command module was the difficult part because there's no power in there. The temperatures are dropping rapidly. The instrumentation is starting to freeze, moisture is building up in the spacecraft. And with the limited amount of power, it was really Ken that figured out the sequence of being able to start up the computers again on the spacecraft and check all the systems that would actually allow them to have enough power to actually get back home because they didn't know just how bad a condition that spacecraft was in uh, on that journey to the moon because we didn't have enough information coming back. So Ken's role in ensuring that they could get enough power, that the sequence was right to be able to return this spacecraft, literally a crippled spacecraft, back in through the atmosphere of the Earth at 25,000 kilometres per hour with temperatures of over 3,000 degrees hitting the heat shield, you cannot underestimate just the role that he played, plus the thousands of other people, of course, NASA working on this problem. Now, Glenn, an amazing explanation there, but I believe he was instrumental with the famous line, Houston, we have a problem, when that all unfolded. So Ken was actually at home uh, during the Apollo 13 mission and initially hadn't heard that there was a problem with the spacecraft. So when uh, both uh, Jack Swigert, who was on Apollo 13, and Jim Lovell later said, you know, Houston, we've had a problem, then... They were a race now to sort of fight, what are we going to do? How are we going to get these astronauts back home? And so Ken was brought in uh, a few hours after that to be able to then start working on this problem because he literally just switched off. He was so disappointed not to be on the mission that he just decided not to actually watch uh, what was happening, you know, a couple of days into the mission. So, yeah, him waking up and sort of getting into action, that was really, really important and shows his professionalism be able to jump on in, to be able to just continue working for literally 72 hours straight to actually get this spacecraft ready to allow the astronauts to get it prepared to come back. An amazing life, career and legacy. Glenn Nagel, thanks so much for your analysis this morning. Thank you.